Good afternoon. My name is Cam Dr. Kamal Said Formosa. I'm a lecturer and coordinator in MA taxation at the University of Malta. Today, I will be discussing how um, SDG goals are integrated within our lectures from a text perspective. So why the title? I have entitled the, this presentation as The Penniless Man Finds No Favor in Love. It is a translation of a Maltese um, quote, which means Blaflus Latana Ola Asbus, a well-known well -known Maltese idiom, uh, comes to mind when I hear anything regarding sustainability being discussed. The idiom roughly translates into without money, you really can't get ahead in life. Um, and the, the simpler phrase really reflects what I believe needs to be done for us to have long-term success in sustainability, in achieving um, SD goals. And in my myopic it's a, a view, viewpoint, um, I see sustainable development as requiring good tax policy. The tax policy needs to be geared towards sustainable development. Um, sustainability and taxation are not often discussed in the same context, yet without tax policy, how can sustainable uh, goals be achieved and sustained? Tax policy and sustainability, therefore, for me, go hand in hand. Tax policy needs to be geared towards sustaining and supporting um, sustainable endeavors. Therefore, tax policy and taxation has a two-pronged approach. It has two ways in which we can achieve these goals. Number one, policy can help to generate funds to sustain projects uh, which promote, develop, and enhance sustainable development initiatives. Secondly, taxation, its inclusion or exclusion can be used to direct our actions towards or away from actions which support or hinder um, sustainable development goals. How do we integrate sustainable development goals within our text lectures? First and foremost, um, taxation is not often taught within sustainable development goals in, the, in our mindset. But for things to improve, there needs to be a shift in thinking. We have achieved a good ranking amount. We are 33rd out of 193 countries. So that's quite a good position. However, we have remained at the same position for over recent years. So I'm talking about how we can possibly go a step ahead by using tax policy. Um, what have we been doing in Malta? We have been integrating recently a more holistic perspective towards our lectures. Uh, students attending both the MA taxation course which is a relatively new course and has a, a second intake in January, 2023. And the MA accountancy course, which um, a few years ago was revamped, our future business leaders go and attend these courses. They're gonna be future policy makers and strategic partners in our economy. So it's important they have a holistic perspective and of the implication of their decision-making. It is key that at the very inception of our teaching, we highlight how important policy is in terms of not only the economic realities that are faced when decisions are being made, but on the wider reach of policy decisions. Taxation is a key instrument to in maintaining and exceeding sustainable development goals. And we talk about fair taxation, taxation and competition, we talk about wealth distribution, we talk about family policies, we talk about tax incentives and their steering effect, how they affect the consumers, how they affect producers, how they affect uh, taxpayers. The new MA course has um, been, re been um, developed and is now being revamped, specifically aimed at having this holistic perspective. Um, we have not only a wide range of topics, which are a bit different than the norm, a bit different than what is usually taught in taxation, but within the credits themselves, we also look at specifically educating our future policymakers who wish to undertake future roles within government institutions and who will in fact be future policymakers. 
What do we do? We have a number of courses. This is just a brief introduction. What's really interesting, and I'll just take a snippet of what our lectures involve, is text design, um, which I will discuss in subsequent lectures. There is also other lectures, such as VAT. And VAT is probably the first course that students ever attend in the field of taxation. And it reflects very much the SDG goals. One might not think about that as within the context of SDG goals, but as we look at that and why it is developed in such a way and why certain actions or certain products, certain services are subject to that and others are not, one realized this that when we ask the why question of VAT, we have a good understanding of how tech can actually be used to achieve SDG goals. In fact, I've done a, a very small introduction here on our VAT Act. And let's take, for instance, basic food. Basic food items are not subject to that. And this falls within a number of SDG goals. Education, again, is not subject to that. This is to ensure that we have a situation where the tax burden doesn't hinder development, doesn't hinder growth, doesn't hinder the economy. We also have a number of activities where, which are not subject to VAT and or, and or are able to apply for a VAT refund specifically on renewables. So renewable energy uh, innovations have been subject to favorable tax treatment. Uh, and this again is to help us achieve a cleaner environment and improve our overall well-being. Um, the tax design course that we specifically include within our MA taxation course has a, 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 a has a strong focus on future policymakers. So we discuss with our students in the first part, we'll have up to 12 international guest speakers who come to our lectures. They speak in a holistic perspective and they speak about um, how tax policy, how its implementation, how its design affects their day-to-day -day work. And this is important because students in the first part of the course, they see a very practical side to tax design. Students in the second part, students in the second part, so in the first part, we, we, in the first part, we talk about wealth distribution, inequality and taxation, VAT and the cost of living, um, which is very relevant at the moment, at the moment inflation, etc. Uh, we talk about taxation in the environment, we talk about pressure groups. In the first part, after these open discussions with the uh, 12 international guest speakers who come for an hour and a half over a, a 12 week period. Um, we have the second part of the course, which specifically focuses on giving assignments to students which are who, who are required to take on board what is discussed, the perspectives discussed in the first part of the course in implementing and designing a new text legislation on a topic which has a very social aspect usually. So I might give them a topic of, um, you know, there's a, um, a new project in, in locally, and they have to design a new text to implement this. The new uh, law that they must implement has to consider how it is to be implemented, it's, whether it's a direct or indirect tax, the economic impact, what revenue should be, would be expected to generate, and how this would affect demand, can the, can, um, you know, uh, will it be something per, per item as a percentage, they have to discuss this. There is also the social impact in, uh, implications. Then they must look at who will actually bear the cost of the tax. Can they afford to bear the cost of the tax? And this is very relevant to the next slide. One issue that we have discussed in the past with our students is the element of fat tax. Uh, fat tax is fantastic. We think of it as a great way of solving our problems. Tax people who eat sugary drinks, eat um, fatty foods, and will use those revenues to fund our uh, healthcare sector and sort of balance out the burden of unhealthy eating, eating habits and how they affect our, our government expenditure on health. 
However, when we think about it, and we've discussed this a lot in class, um, there is a lot of social aspect to fat taxes. It seems simple, it seems straightforward to implement. However, the burden of the taxes very often more than, more than not, shifted onto consumers. And the consumers, who are they? The consumers are often low-income families who cannot afford any healthier alternatives. And if we were to tax the low-income families, we were to tax the food that they um, consume, we may end up in a situation where we have people who just cannot afford to, to, to meet their daily needs. We also have discussions on environmental taxes and students have been given assignments on this. How would you implement an environmental tax on um, disposal of glass bottles? We have a lot of discussion on past environmental taxes and how they were implemented. And unfortunately in Malta, these have not been um, very successful. The, and from our discussions, and this is why we, we see our students as future policymakers who can think of how a tax will actually be successful in practice. From our discussions, we have found that although there were good intentions in how um, we were to improve our environment and maybe tax certain waste and, and tax certain activities, the way the, in which the tax was implemented wasn't um, appropriate in order to encourage or steer activities towards a positive outcome. So we do talk about environmental taxes. And of course, as you see on the left-hand side, I've noted the, the sustainable goals that we would discuss here. We talk about vacant properties. Vacant properties, we have a huge problem in Malta. Vacant properties has an issue where in Malta we have a lot of vacant properties, prices are going up. However, we have people who just cannot afford to find housing. We find that when we discuss vacant properties as in a bid to solve the housing problem, we have a situation where in Malta, there is very little alternative investment. So people try to hold property and it's quite a difficult area to tax. So although we talk about this, we have yet to find a solution on how to tax vacant property. We also have the opportunity with our students to have research projects which span over 14 months and give the students an opportunity to do quantitative or qualitative research, which has um, opens the, the student's perspective through interviews, through, through discussions, um, and they have contact with social partners, and modern business, uh, prominent business people, and they discuss how a new tax, how an old tax, or how um, changes in our local legislation are going to have an effect on their business, on the consumers, on the taxpayers. Um, the students' research projects are able to shed light on why some tax incentives um, just don't work because they look at the practical side. And this is very important because through our dissertations, we take a very practical um, perspective and it's research-based. So our students have a supervisor who guides them throughout their projects. Um, they actually go into research and into depth of the topic that is given. These are, this is a list of various previous research that our students have undertaken. For instance, I'll just take one example, wealth taxes in Malta. There is the discussion at the moment, you know, we have the divide, high income, low income, high class, low cost. Um, uh, there's discussion at the moment, should we have a wealth taxes in Malta? Wealth taxes could in theory reduce inequality, but you also have an issue where what if an individual has a lot of property, they may not want to sell them, they may not receive any income from that property, but are, they are keeping it as a pension or keeping it for a rainy day should they need um, assistance in the future for health, etc. How should we tax them? Should we tax them on market value? Should we tax them at a flat rate? And there are a lot of repercussions and a lot of discussions on this. So we do a lot of research projects. 
We've only had 10 minutes, so it's quite a quick presentation. I just want to conclude that the aim of the new REVENT course is to develop open and holistically minded tax policy makers. Our tax education needs to be cognizant of the very fact that students are potential policy makers. And we discuss this and their role in the future of Malta from a holistic perspective. Tax policy can encourage or discourage the attainment of sustainable development goals and its role should never be underestimated. We should not underestimate our ability to use tax policy to support the long-term uh, success of SDG goals. I mean, this is a very short presentation. There's a lot to say about taxation. However, I hope you have enjoyed my short presentation. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your comments.